The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. that Canada dry there at you. It is Tuesday, November 7th, 2023. They're not sponsors. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Straymore, along with my co-host, the boss, Otis Wiley, and J.U. Choo Choo Culkrick. If this is your first time to the show, we would love to welcome you. And if you're a long-time listener, please know we got nothing but love for you. Be sure to go into that live chat because that's where the party's at. And follow us on all of our social media platforms at This Is Sparta MSU. Let us know where you're watching from. Shoot, they're watching us in Thailand. What? It's the Michigan, Canada, your place. <laughs> yeah. Hey, where, Qatar. Where's my place. Qatar, you know Canada, man. You got the flag. Yeah, Come on, you, know, you know, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it is right there. Listen. Guys, we got a jam-packed show today. We got two brothers on the show, man. They like forget Philly. Like literally love brothers. Brother love. We got the brotherly love right here in East Lansing. Two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Scully. Oh, what's up with that Scully? Oh, you know, man. Cause look, boy out here looking bad, bad, man. That fade ain't been, it's been like a week and a half. Usually I'm every week. So, you know, I'm out here oh, looking dry, man. you know. It's that it's the tweener. I'm about to grow it, so it's that tweener phase. It's like, ooh, you're getting that winter boy back. Right, winter boy, boy, you got to put that wool on, get ready for the woods and hunt, baby. So you just well, put something on there. Here you go. Right. And, 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 too, we, we got to say something about the shirt, baby. I mean, hey, what's the special occasion? We got, we got, how many, how many shows have two brothers that play on the same team on the show. How many shows get that? They don't get that. So you got to get nice up for the, you know, we got another running back, another running back coming in here, a Ooh. big back too, you know? So we got that coming in. So you got to, you know, put on for your backs. Hey, what, what kind of flowers are those on that shirt? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. We got backs and safety, a Absolutely. back and a safety. We just missing the center. Listen, <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't know what kind of flower those are. Guys, look, man, look, we got to get right into this because we got a lot to cover today. Spartans, Michigan State football beats Nebraska with their first win under head coach Harlan Barnett. Look, I mean, I was, 2017, man. Look, I think this was everybody was waiting for this, right? Like we we knew a couple of games ago that we thought we was going to get it and it didn't happen uh, at Rutgers, uh, and then we didn't finish through in Minnesota. And so to do it at home, I think everybody expectations of senior day, uh, last time the seniors are able to play in the woodshed, uh, there was nothing better, man, to experience Coach Barnett's uh, first win as the uh, interim head coach. And uh, the emotions, I know, have been bottled up because you're just waiting, right? You're just waiting, seeing his family. I mean, a lot of people were, were affected by, you know, the way they came out and balled out for, for Coach B. It was a special day, especially for the seniors, being that, that it was senior day. And it's strange to have senior day so early in the season, but it was the last time that those guys were going to be suiting up for the green and white in Spartan Stadium in front of the home fans. Yeah, absolutely. You, you get this video here. It's very emotional. You see the guys uh, really playing for Coach B. And, uh, you know, that that's one of the biggest things that I took. At the end of the day, you see people running on the field. You saw Nick Samak running with the flag, but and you – Coach B, you know, getting the hug um, from Coach Izzo, him picking Coach Izzo up, all those things. Those are, we're going to get, when we get into the breakdown for the game and everything like that, that's great. This is what I'm talking about here. Here it is right here. That's Izzo. Coach, getting picked up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's like, no, no grown man pick up another grown man, right? <laughs> 
but you know that 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 was something that was special. That was that was a that was a good thing. And uh, shout out to the players, man. They they fought their asses off. They they came out and they battled. Um, and you know we saw you know when everything happened, you know that Washington game was a gut punch. Then you know you had some games that we were in at Rutgers. You had some you know miscues and different parts. Of, you know just gut punches. But this was they were able to put things together and have a complete game here. And uh, you know the defense ended things. I uh, put pressure. A lot of impressive stats there. We'll get into it when we get to the breakdown there. But also too, I want to give a big shout out to Spartan fans for coming out, man. Mm. They came out to yeah. uh, Spartan Stadium yeah. there because I was I will be one. I was like, man, you know, I hope we get a crowd today for these boys on Senior Day. But uh, Spartan Nation showed up and showed out. They were loud. They were proud, and they supported. Yes, one yeah. heck of atmosphere in November. I ain't gonna lie, like that was the best weather from a game day in a long time. Absolutely. Yes, it, it wasn't bad weather at all. It was nice, and uh, there was a huge section on the visitors' side over there. I think it was around section I don't know, like four or five, something like that. It was a Same. lot of no shirts going on in Spartan Stadium. I mean, we had some pictures on our social media uh, showing that uh, it, it was it was quite an event. And so you couldn't be happier for Harlan Barnett. I know we had Rico Beard on last week, and he talked about he wanted to be there. Seen a lot of video of Rico down there on the on the field, getting some nice footage of the win uh, for for Harlan Barnett as he celebrates his first victory as a head coach. And it was good to see the players finally get that win that they've been so close to over the past six, seven games, and they got it done. Uh, in, in front of the home crowd on senior day. It's something they'll never forget, guys, you know, for the rest of their life. Uh, you, we don't forget our senior days, and nothing, none of us had as many things to overcome, in my opinion, as the seniors in this class during this season with the coach being uh, fired in the – like not even in the middle, pretty much in the beginning of the season, <laughs> week two, and still trying to find your way and get everything organized mm -hmm. and keeping everybody together. That's been the biggest – Thing for me as far as what coach Harlan Barnett has been able to prove is keeping everyone together and, and hats off to him and his family uh, for what they've been able to do. Guys, we got to move on to the other news over in the Breslin center. Just last night, Michigan state basketball, fourth rank MSU men's basketball loses to James Madison in overtime, 79 to 76. Yeah, that, that was a tough one. Uh, that's the first time since 1970 the Spartans have lost a home opener. Um, and the first uh, home game, um, you know, that they've lost since, uh, you know, 1986, you know, at, at Breslin in November. The first home game in November that the Spartans have lost since 86 and first home opener they've lost since 1970. But, you know, I, I was, you know, scrolling through. I, you watch the game. You're seeing the comments on social media throughout the game, at the end of the game. People, it just shows how fickle fans are. People are ready to throw in the towel. I, I just, I had a one-word tweet, a one-word post on all my social. It's, it's, you know, coin what Aaron Rodgers said. Relax. Relax, Spartan Nation. How does the calendar go? January, February? Is a Exactly. Let us get, we'll get things going. And I always hate when Michigan State is ranked super high at the beginning of the season. Anyways, I think Izzo hates that as well. But, um, you know, we need to relax. Yes, there's some things that we have to do better. We have to play better. We need better play from, from our seniors. We need better play from our guys. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to be fine. Otis? Any yeah, comments? I thought, I thought he had more because he said, fine. I thought he was going a little bit more. Uh, everyone who watched that, you know, they, like all eyes was on us uh, when this moment because it's, it's an upset. Um, simple things, man. got to go back to the basics. Like defense still wins games. Uh, it's in tough defense where, you know, I can point out a lot of things that obviously went wrong. But, you know, we got time to button that up and get ready for uh, for Thursday's game. Uh, but simple things is rebounding, rebounding and, and de defending the three ball, um, which, in our opinion, you know, these guys came out like you can't discredit J uh, James Madison. Like those guys balled out. Like it's not like they were like, you know, a rinky dinky program like they have players, too. And like I think even playing field college basketball has became a little bit more even playing field. So 
you know, credit to them. Like they fought, they played a great game from start to finish and didn't come down, come on uh, to East Lancer to back down. So for us, it's just a, a, a awakening. It's a humbling experience, but it's going to prepare us for those battles when we need it the most. So uh, I'm excited to see what they, how they bounce back. Cause they definitely are probably going through the ringer practice. Cause you <laughs> <Yes>. already know <laughs> like, that's a, that's a different thing of like, look, you played bad and you about to go hard in practice. Like, so we just hope that they, they still have their legs on Thursday because I, I guarantee like all those free throws missed, man, like we would have easily had a, a, a long lead, a big lead if we would have made all of our free throws. 15, it just 15 wasn't points. working. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't. It just don't fall, man. It is what it is. But well, go ahead. Tyson Walker. You know, it's crazy. The amount of put on and coach Enzo still said he played bad <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there's some choice words from head coach Tom Izzo after the ball game you know calling out his leaders the juniors and seniors basically mm -hmm. saying like look if you guys don't step up and lead like you're supposed to I'm gonna play the freshman so let the controversy begin but on that guys I, I remember you know you guys might have still been in diapers it was December 30th 1999 Michigan State lost they were ranked number six they lost to Right state, right state, fifty-three to forty-nine. Mm. One of the biggest upsets of that college football—I mean, basketball season. Excuse me. Tom Izzo ended up winning the national championship later on, a few months mm. later. It is November, guys. I, I think what Chu's analysis is is absolutely correct. Relax. You got Tom Izzo, and Izzo we trust. We will be fine in Michigan State basketball with all the talent that they have. They just got to iron some things out. So, you know, congratulations. Interesting. interesting. To Tony G. James Madison. Tony G's out here giving us these nuggets, right? He must be texting you with that nugget you just dropped, which is great, by the way. No, so he's not texting me. Camp. Like, I do homework. I know what. Listen, I was, I was alive. I know you're there. You're right. I was, I was in there. I was probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was it alive is. back then. That was I was graduated as a matter of fact. Right. He he, yeah. he says you know MSU's zero and three when Walker scores over thirty. Now let's talk about like flashback. I know we want to harp on this because we got a lot of things on this on the agenda here. But our inbounds play when we take a timeout under fifteen seconds is atrocious. Like think about the games that we look back past season last year where. We cannot convert when he has the ball in hand. Like he's trying to have that Dame time, right? Dame, Damian Lillard, and he hasn't converted. I don't know if it's not the flow of players not understanding, but we haven't converted to win the game in these elements. So I'm hoping we can change that because it's going to come down to the nitty gritty down the line, down the season. So uh, interesting stat, Tony G. Good. Congratulations, bro. Kudos. <laughs> giving us that good kudos to giving us that good nugget award. award. Can we get the can we, that was one that was one of that was one of them already? All right, can we get one, the kudos, kudos machine? Can we get the teams. kudos? Come on. Right. I mean, man, usually the crack producer, Tony L in this case, didn't bring it on when you called on it, but that's okay. Listen, okay. we move on. As we digress, as Sean has said, we've been taking too long on this. We have to cover the bad stuff too, Sean. All right. Listen, Spartan Athletics adds another championship. Tennis, men's tennis doubles. Listen, Max Sheldon and Ozan Barris win ATA Fall National Championships double title. Listen, yeah, I'm sorry, like, yeah, I was like, look, Chew, this is your game right here. You know, it's your game. I know you're the pickleball champion. You're the did, volleyball I did, champion. I did take, I did take tennis lessons from fourth grade to twelfth grade. So, um, when, <laughs> but no, this is great. Uh, you know, this is the first time that these guys played in this event, and you know, having the opportunity to go to that for the first time and win it all, that just shows like there's a lot of winning that's happening at MSU. You know, yeah, we talk about you know the basketball team that lost, but this is something that can be celebrated. So shout out to those guys uh, for you know winning a national title. That's something no one can ever take away from you. No doubt about it. First, first players in program history, not to only earn the entry to this event, but also to win it all. Like, can I, it's an can incredible I add thing. This, can I add this, Trey? A former tennis player who is the head coach of our men's tennis program. Like, if there's there's some sit there's some tennis like there's some secret things here, right? Where you got a former former player who knows how to win and knows the DNA of that program. Is so, this foreshadowing? Is this a foreshadowing I'm moment just, by I'm just, Otis I'm just Wiley? Saying, I'm just saying. 
All good. Next on to the next one. You gonna give them kudos? Kudos. I, I got, hey, listen. You, kudos to Max and those. We got former players that are coaching. Okay. Cross, All right. Cross Harlan country. Barnett. I'm hearing cross Harlan country. Barnett is what I'm right. hearing from you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Look, moving on. Women's soccer earns second straight NCAA tournament berth, and they'll be the fifth seed when they play Ohio on Friday. And they're going to host this thing. Yeah. Tickets? Yeah. Nothing. Yep. What you said tickets. tickets uh, show up. Yeah, let's go. So DeMar Stadium hosting. It's always great to host, um, you know, the tournament. And that's a, an opportunity to be able to have home field advantage. Um, they're in a good bracket. Uh, they are in that no, one seed bracket with BYU, which is a number one seed. So Provo if we bracket. can, yeah. So if mm-hmm. we can win out, you're going to obviously face BYU. Um, but the, I know the girls are ready. I've talked to MJ today. Uh, she was in office doing work, but they're getting ready to get their mind focused on uh, on Ohio. True, like I mean, in soccer, because I know you're a professional soccer player as well as you're a professional in everything. Like I know the girls. We talked to them on Saturday. We're like talking about like, we can go to places that's nice and sunny. But it may not be in November in Michigan uh, at soccer uh, for women. Is that an advantage, a home field advantage, if it's cold there and you got people coming from maybe Utah where it, the weather is kind of up and down this time of year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's definitely an advantage. When, when, it, when the grass is wet, when the grass is cold, the ball moves differently. So you, 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 if you play and then you practice in that, you're going to understand it. You're going to understand the trajectory of it and how to you know maneuver around it compared to someone that has better weather all the way through and some people that may play on turf or some people you know playing on grass. So it's, it's definitely going to be um, an added advantage for the Spartans because that's their home field, their home pitch. The pitch. See, we learn something new from Chew every day. It, yeah, it's not just the, the element, it's the ground, it's right? Scala, bro. Yeah, yeah. We can't, we can't, we could not shake Chew. You guys like what you heard so far? Please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that. Doesn't cost you anything, helps us a whole lot. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social medias at This is Part of MSU. We'll be back in a moment after this message from our friends over at IHOP. <laughs> Introducing IHOP's new menu with perfectly crispy yet fluffy waffles, warm, flaky buttermilk biscuits, juicy, satisfying steak burgers, decadent eggs, Benedicts, and more. It's time to find your new favorite. Don't worry, we won't tell the pancakes. Only at IHOP. Let's put a smile on your plate. Hey, man, look here. I'm going to tell you one thing. It is always an excitement to have a current player on the broadcast with us right now. But we got two. We got brothers, nonetheless. Jaron and Jaden Mangum join. This is part of MSU. Welcome to the show, fellas. How you doing, boss? Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. Oh, man. We're doing awesome, man. And we're pumped to have you two on the show. You guys have been making plays. You've been doing a lot of things. But, like, we want to get down to it and understand the journey that you guys have been on together as brothers. Now, you both grew up in Michigan, obviously, uh, but – when did you guys start playing sports? Because I, I, I'm going to start with you, Jaron. Um, well, I started playing sports at the age of seven. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad has kind of always been my coach. Uh, he kind of coached me until, like, my freshman year of high school. So, you know, he's always been in my ear, and he knows how to get the best out of his kids. So, um, you know, he always pushed me to go hard. And, uh, you know, starting at a very young age and learning different things, I uh, became very knowledge- like knowledgeable of the game. You know, so um, I'm very grateful for that experience to have. Uh, Jaden really didn't get to have that experience, um, you know, of my dad coaching him. So he didn't really get, like, the extra, you know, tough love. Uh, so that's why I think I'm, I'm probably a little bit more tougher than Jaden. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> little bro going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, um, and I'm, I'm just very, you know, grateful for my football journey. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of ups and downs. So I'm just very excited. Yeah, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, the upbringing, you know, Detroit, you know, obviously you're what, three years of three years apart. Was it four years? Uh, Four. Four years. So you never got a chance to play besides on this level, I'm assuming. Right. Because you were being in high school and he's coming up. And so. Talk about the decision, because clearly you were at another uh, institution, another program. 
and your dec decision to come and play with your younger brother? Um, well, you know, the portal is very, uh, you know, crazy uh, nowadays. Um, so, you know, that whole process was very, you know, stressful. Uh, I guess you could say, um, you know, getting reached at by a lot of different schools. But I will say this, Jaden was, you know, rooting very hard for Spartan Nation. Um, he wouldn't stop bothering me. Uh, I almost wanted to, like, block his phone number for how much he always reached out, <laughs> tried to get me to, uh, you know, come here. But, you know, it was always a dream come true, you know, to just play with my little brother. And uh, I would always watch some of his games, and I would be like, bro, it would probably be, like, a cool experience if we played together some someday. And I just remember saying that at a hotel whenever I was watching one of his games. And, you know, it's crazy to think, you know, now we're here. Yeah. Jaden, what what was it like when he when he finally said, did he tell you first? Like, or who did he tell first that he was gonna make that transfer here? And what was that finally like after uh pursuing him to come to uh East Lansing? Uh, you know, he he told he told our dad first, and you know, uh then I ended up finding out. So, you know, I was excited. Uh it was great to uh pick him up so he could be here. And you know, uh I was looking forward to us finally being able to meet each other in the hall. Oh, <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> like what's all that talk you've been talking? Yeah. Hey, oh, I, was yeah. finally, I was finally looking forward to that. We really haven't got a we we haven't got a good one yet, but but I know it's coming soon. <laughs> Jaden, was that, like that when, when Jaden when they were recruiting Jaron to come to East Lansing, was there added pressure on you inside the building? Like, hey man, talk to your brother, get him over here. What was that like? Uh, oh, yeah, it definitely was. You know, uh, a lot of people were asking me, uh, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? And, uh, you know, I couldn't I couldn't tell anything until, <laughs> until it was made official. And, then you know, uh, once it was made official, you know, uh, it was good. And we're here now. So, Jaren, like, so you you have an interesting story because you were recruited to Colorado initially out of Cast Tech. Yes, sir. You said the best high school in the state of Michigan. Is that right? Or yeah. The country? The best high school in the state of Michigan, hands down. <laughs> you guys went to different high school. We're gonna give Grove some love in a minute here. In a minute, Jade. But so you you go to Colorado with Mel Tucker uh, mm -hmm. initially, and you know obviously he he leaves, goes to Michigan State. You go to South Florida, and then back to Michigan State with your little brother. Tell me what, if any, value like that your experience with through those moves was for, on this locker room at Michigan State as you go through this season? Um, Well, like I said, I've been through a lot of, you know, adversity throughout my college career. And um, I am I experienced, you know, losing a coach, obviously, with Coach Tucker. And, um, you know, at Colorado in the situation of him leaving and then coming to Michigan State, especially if that was, you know, the guy that kind of recruited me to go there. Um, so, you know, it was just kind of, you know, uh, put your head down and, you know, just keep working type of ordeal. Then COVID happens. So, you know, that kind of derailed a couple of things. Um, I really just had to feel like I had to get in a new setting, which caused me to, you know, enter the portal the first time. And, you know, I had a bunch of schools, you know, once again, but Jeff Scott and, you know, the recruiting staff there, they just made me feel at home. So I felt that that was just the best fit for me to, you know, become a man, become more mature. And, you know, just overall, like, you know, just kind of build myself back up. And then once I went down there, you know, obviously I had a great season, um, set plenty of records over there, um, you know, that I'm very proud of. Um, you know, most uh, touchdowns by running back in school history at USF. So I'm very, you know, proud of the moments that I got to cherish there. And then, you know, obviously with the coach being fired, um, I had to make some pretty tough decisions after graduating. So, um, you know, I decided to take that leap of faith again. And, uh, you know, um, this year has been, you know, a crazy one. Um, uh, you know, but like I said, um, just keeping the locker room together, like these guys, you know, even though I've just been around them for a year, like I love these guys so much. Um, we've been through so much together. And just being that locker room bond, you know, like guys come up to me and ask me like, how do I feel about certain situations? And I give them my input um, and, you know, telling them that, you know, certain things are, you know, how they look. You know what I'm saying? You just got to wait and just keep grinding because, you know, you never know what you're going to get at the end of the tunnel. And that's really kind of the mindset that I've had, you know, especially dealing with, um, you know, the um, injuries that I faced this year, especially coming off from a great spring ball. 
um, going into a great fall camp. You know, I had high expectations and then boom, you know, just get injured. And then obviously, you know, people know that I was warming up, um, getting ready in the game. And then I got hurt in the warm ups, which was frustrating. Uh, so, you know, I just kind of taking it day by day and just kind of trying to keep everyone together. You know, that was really kind of been my job. And now, you know, I'm starting to get work back into the game plan. So, you know, I'm just very excited, you know. Um, and, you know, I just cherish the moments playing with my little brother again. And uh, that's really kind of, you know, been my thing, you know, just focusing on everything else, you know, cherishing these moments, you know, that you don't really get to relive. So that's really kind of been my goal. Yeah. And uh, Jaden, for you, uh, there was a lot of emphasis put on the defense. Last year, um, I think the defense only had one interception last season. And mm -hmm. uh, there was that, that big sombrero was put on the defense. And uh, I think we all in here, you know, the three of us, Stray, Otis, and I, we said at the beginning of the season, this defense is going to be much improved from last year. I think there was a lot of injuries last year that you guys couldn't run what you wanted to run schematic wise and now you're starting to get there firing all cylinders there but what was that pressure like going from last season to like the team having just one interception and this season you know you yourself with four and what should have been five but an offset and penalties there <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what, what was your, what's your mindset and the defensive mindset this season um you know the defensive mindset you know you know coming from off of last year you know everybody thought we we were the weakness uh you know we were what held us back so, you know, that that pushed a lot of us this year. So, you know, once we heard that, we went, when we came in the spring, you know, we just wanted to work and get better. And, you know, bringing in Coach Salgado and all of that, that's helped, that's helped the defensive backs out a lot. You know, Coach Barnett, you know, they've been coaching us hard, doing all of this. You know, Coach Hazleton always stays on top of us. So, you know, just with all of that, that's been able to make us just so much better. And, you know, uh, from the takeaway standpoint, you know, having won for a whole year like that's just that's unacceptable you know that was that wasn't gonna roll and you know with us being just so young you know like we just said we just gonna go out here and do whatever and you know it's been working for us so you know we just got to keep building upon that you know Jaden, like what 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 is clicked because clearly <laughs> you know you know when you see a player and you see a man like he knows where he needs to be at. He knows his eyes, his tendency, like in the deep end, like you're there where the ball's at. Like what, what click? Cause I know sometimes it takes a minute to understand full scheme and like calls and adjustments and just, you know, recognize an offense, but just what clicked and like, you know, now you balling clearly, but like <laughs> what, what fully clicked for you? Uh, You know, really, you know, at the beginning of the season, you know, like last year, you know, I was just really thinking too much, you know, just think, 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 and, you know, I wasn't playing. And, you know, uh, now it's just I go out there and I'm just ready to play. You know, uh, Coach Salgado, uh, he's helped me out a lot. You know, being able to gain his experience for everybody in the room has helped out a lot. And, you know, with him coaching me and telling me, giving me a few pointers, <laughs> it's definitely put me in the right position to make a couple of plays. So, yeah, I, that's a great point. You bring up Coach Salgado there. He was with the uh, – Buffalo Bills coaching up on probably one of the the best secondary in 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 the NFL with you know Tredavious White, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poirier. You do, you know do you guys watch film? Do you personally watch film or who in the league you look at and emul try to emulate your game as? And then what type of questions do you ask Coach Salgado? Because obviously both of you, your goal is hard to play at the next level, and he coming from the next level, and you have that you know, wealth of knowledge in your position room there. So what is the, his, his um, knowledge from the NFL, how has that been bestowed upon you and what kind of questions and what kind of film do you watch on? Uh, you know, having that knowledge is great. You know, with us being so young and him being able to come in and just mold us has been outstanding for us. Cause you know, he's just been able to help it up, help us out with a lot. And, you know, watching the uh, Bill's film, and doing a couple of the stuff that they do in game, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely taking us to a whole new level. Um, but, you know, that's definitely, I really just say it's great with him just being here and being able to help that, you know, we always watch film on what to do, um, some of their coverages that we've implemented. Uh, and, you know, him, it's helped out the safeties a lot, you know. He's put the safeties in 
a lot of positions to make a lot of plays. You know, we've been coming away with them. Yeah, no question wow. with the guys have been coming away. I mean, what, second <laughs> in the Big Ten right now with, with your four picks and eighth in the NCAA? I mean, you, how, how can you, you know, you, you've gone – uh, from last year having uh, struggling from the secondary standpoint. Now you're a bona fide star. So our nation knows exactly who <laughs> Mangum brothers are, especially you with these interceptions. Listen, listen, Jared, you said that you set the single season running back record, I believe, at University of South Florida, right? Yes, sir. How many was that? It was 15. Okay, we got a guy on this show. <laughs> one of <laughs> us that's got, what, how many, 20, I don't know, Two. ish, Ah, 22. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. Did you have 22 or 21? Nate, 21. Oh, uh, 22. Yeah. He, he almost had that 22. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I See, I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the thing, Jared, I got to say though, um, being a big back, you got to like, how much do you embrace? Because I remember, like, really getting a look at you. Um, it was, Minnesota. When I said look Minnesota, at, we're standing. Said, look you at Jared. I said, you look come out of the tunnel, and <laughs> on the field, you're a bigger guy than you look yeah. like, you know, walking the street clothes. And I was like, holy shit, this kid is <laughs> 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 Yeah, but t- t- talk about, like, embracing being a big back because, you know, some people are, are big backs and they try to run outside of them, you know, try to do outside zone, try to shake guys and everything like that. What does it mean to be a big back, especially in the Big Ten? And talk about the difference from the different levels that you were at, from Colorado, being a back like you were, and then South Florida, and then the Big Ten. How do those compare for a running back? Okay, well, you know, obviously being a, you know, big back, you got to be able to set the tone. So, um, you know, when you got to get those dirty yards in a game, um, you know, you got to rely on someone to get those, you know, four yards, four yards, pop them for 15 and come back, you might get one, two, you know, and just keep popping them and keep chipping them away. And I feel like, you know, I do a great job in that. Um, you know, obviously with bigger backs, you know, it's a, a heavier load. Um, and, you know, um, in the different conferences that I played in, you know, in the Pac-12 and the, and the AAC and the Big Ten, um, I will say like the Big Ten, it's a lot more bigger guys, but um, I really kind of feel like there isn't really like, you know, that much of a difference. Um, the people up front are a lot more thicker um and that's really kind of like what i saw for me personally just seeing like the d tackles be a lot more bigger mm-hmm. i know you missed yeah. that weather though in florida i'll tell you that but <laughs> down there in tampa <laughs> oh I was, yeah. I was loving the weather out there i was loving it <laughs> Jaden, you know i had the privilege of having only two years with coach b and uh coach d'antonio right and i know that what they did for my career in those two years was better than all four years combined, clearly, right? And so you're able to have Coach B, you know, from from start, and then you get Salgado, and then you get Coach D, the OG, come in yeah. mid season to kind of give you some pointers. And I, I know there's probably some lingo that he may be saying that you probably don't even <laughs> understand. Uh, but you know, talk about just you get three guys that are very, very defensive minded, defensive back guys. Like they all have a, a big time knowledge. But, uh, you know, talk about the other, your other running mates, really. Like, you got Malik Spencer. You got really the two best young sophomore, you know, safeties in the in the league right now. And then you got Dylan Tatum. And then you got Rucker, freshman. Like, Spartan Nation, we have, like, strong feature <laughs> with the four that's currently playing. Uh, but talk about the, 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 the chemistry of all four of you all. Because I see now that, I, that the DNA, the identity of you guys really – helping control the narrative on the defensive side. But talk about the chemistry with the U4. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, before the season had even started, you know, we were looking at it. We were we were really young. You know, I think we, we might be the youngest secondary in the Big Ten. So, you know, um, we just made it a big emphasis to just go out there and play. I mean, you know, we knew we were going to make mistakes, but we also knew we were going to make plays. So, you know. We couldn't let any of that hold us back. And, you know, with having Coach Barnett, Coach D'Antonio, and Coach Salgado, you know, that's just crazy. <laughs> you know, like all all three of them just being able to help us, you know, <clears throat> being able to hear something from Coach Salgado and then a play later, Coach D'Antonio coming up to you to also coach you, you know, like it's crazy. 
And, you know, that's definitely helped us out a lot. And, you know, really, you know, the future is just bright with us, you know. We're just super young. And, you know, right now we've been doing great things. So I can't wait to see how it is when we get older. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the fact that we have, you know, before this past week, it was a six-game losing streak. And losing by just heartbreaking ways, like gut wrench, a punt return. And then you have, you know, the blunder with the special teams at Rutgers and just different things that just keep adding up. And then finally, finally was able to put everything together on this past Saturday and especially ending with the defense on the field, putting um, and the, throughout the whole game, we all knew the game, the game plan going in, Nebraska wanted to run the football. But we talked about it, Stray and I talked about it in a pregame show. If we can take them out of the element and make them one-dimensional, make them throw, because we said if you rattle that quarterback, he's going to turn the football over. Um, so it was that your guys' thought process? And how did it feel after the game, finally getting that, that you know, L off your back and now you're winners in Spartan Stadium? How did that feel? That felt great. <laughs> that felt that felt amazing. You know, uh, you know, we knew coming in that Nebraska, I think, was the number one run offense in America. You know, they run predominantly the ball. Who knows how many times? So you know, we knew if we got them off uh, off that, we knew it was just going to be on the secondary and uh, us really holding the holding it down on that back end. And so you know, you know, we did our job, and you know, it was just great. I mean, really, but I mean, you know, we just got to keep going and just pushing through. But I mean, it, it was good. No, hey, look, guys, you know, I, I I love this man. And you know, I got a lot of questions for all of you, for both of you. But you know, one thing, Jaron, you brought up was when you started playing sports, it was you were like you was in police playing a little daddy ball. So daddy was coaching you, and people, you know, daddy ball has a um, a bad rap i think because people sometimes think that that means that it's it's like soft and like coaches are gonna uh you know let the kid be quarterback and be the pitcher in baseball and all those good things right you know shoot the ball whenever he wants in basketball but for you it sounds like you know you got a father obviously with you two boys doing and playing at the level you're playing that don't play any games right so how was that you know as having your father coach you and you said that Jaden didn't get a chance to do that. Like, so how, what did he instill in you toughness wise, mentally tough that, that, that you carry on today? Um, well, you know, obviously no one's going to tell you the truth more than, you know, someone who loves you. And uh, my dad always kept it, you know, truthful. I got, I can go out there and have the best game in the world, you know, 250 <laughs> rushing yards, five touchdowns. He'll still find something I can get better with. And at the time, I'm going to be completely honest. I was very frustrated sometimes hmm. um, with the tough love because I'm like, dang, like, man, I'm, I'm out here balling. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really doing this. But now I thank him for that because, like, the lessons that I learned with football, I really took those lessons into life. Like, literally, like, it's so crazy, like, just going through, like, some of those adversities that I kind of went through with my dad and like seeing those fall into life. And, you know, I love him for that, you know, and I always told him, I, I appreciate him for that, you know, and uh, those times, you know, back then when we were, you know, button heads, sometimes it was all out of love though. So I, I love that man to death. And, uh, you know, he, he did a great job in raising us both. And, um, you know, I hope he's uh, proud of us. Well, I know he's proud of us, but you know, He's very picky. I know he's going to try to find something that uh, we can improve on, which I love him for. And, you know, I'm just very blessed that, you know, he took that time and, uh, you know, built that bond with me. Absolutely. Awesome. There's there's just two things I got to uh, have for you guys before we let you go. One, one is a piece of advice. And I'm sure uh, Stray and Otis are going to say this, you know, share the same sentiment with me. Um, you guys have an opportunity this week. You're going to Ohio State. You're playing under the lights. Everyone in this box here that you can see their faces have faith in what you guys can do on Saturday night. Oh, Everyone man. in the chat, a high percentage have faith, but there's some that's like, eh, I don't know. Everyone outside don't have the faith in you guys. 
So I'm going to say that right now. But we have faith in you guys for what you can do on Saturday at Ohio State. This guy, Jason, they were number one. It was, what, 25 years ago today? Today. We watched it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you guys watched it. Yeah. And Stray mm-hmm. was the, the center on that team. So he can tell you more in depth about what it means to go down there and beat that team. That was 1998? Yes. Yes, it was. They were ranked yes. number one, yep. Uh-huh. Number one. Of course. That's- what we called this game, the old heads that played Spartan football, we called games like this money game. Yeah, money man. game. Yeah. This is where yeah. you're on national TV. You both want to play at the next level. You get to showcase. Jaron, you're coming back now. I see it. You're coming back in there. You're getting healthy. Now run. Run that ball. Tote that rock. For sure. Jayden, you, you two games now. You came to Odinson. Now you said, I'm going to get one. I'm going to get one. <laughs> hey, yeah. You're you gonna come back. Come back to the sideline. Cause crib uh, that thing, though. I, listen, yeah. crib it. That's what you got to do. Because look, so y'all, that's y'all, my you, advice to you guys. Plays. Go and, ahead. And, my, and that's my advice to you guys. Take advantage of the moment on on mm-hmm. on uh, Saturday night. It's not too big. It's not anything. It's a moment for you guys. It's NBC national TV. Shock the world. Shock the world. Believe in that and tell your teammates that because we as sure as hell do. And the last thing I want to ask you guys from both of you, because you're both on unique perspectives on this one here. Jaron, you're coming in. You've been in the program one year and the the bottom fell out, you know, and we're going to call a spade a spade, right. you know, with everything that's happened in the program here. Jaden, you've been here. To, so, like, what would you guys say to – teammates that are thinking about maybe transferring out or recruits that are thinking about choosing Michigan state and guys that are already committed and you see some are falling off right now. What would you guys say to those people? Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, You know, sometimes, uh, you know, the best decision for you is to find somewhere else, but I will say this though, think long and hard about the process. Um, before you do it, talk with your family, obviously, um, pray on it, sleep on it, you know, um, you got to also take an account of everything, you know, the brotherhood that you built, you know, with your teammates, um, obviously you committed to a university, not a coach. Um, so hey, say that one more you know, time, say one more time, you know, you, you committed to a university, not a coach. Um, so, you know, obviously the bonds that you built with your teammates, the brotherhood, um, it's ultimately how do you guys want to leave your legacy? Um, you know, the class that you built, um, the class of guys that you came in with, um, you know, it will be, you know, sad to see them all disperse and go away. Uh, so you just really got to ask yourself and, you know, just um, sometimes the best choice is really just to thug it out. Mm. <laughs> Jay, hey, 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 sp- speaking of that, hey, Jay, go ahead. You want to? You want to go? I was going to ask Jaren one more question because I know we got to we got to wrap up in a minute. But <laughs> when you you a big bruising back, who you model yourself after? As who a, do I model myself back? after? Yeah, mm. it's a lot of bigger um, backs that I love to watch. Um, Derrick Henry is one that I love to watch. Najee was a, a a good one to watch too. Um, a lot of people don't really watch you know this one, but I, I like I like to watch a little bit of Eric Dickerson also. <laughs> you know, uh, hello, Spartan dog. I mean, they too young. They too young. They, so they too young for that. <laughs> and yeah, you, talk, you say that real life. Uh, oh, baby. <laughs> and a fellow Spartan dog that I loved also was Le'Veon Bill. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, like for, for I got two big backs on 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 the show right now, so I gotta like you know get some big back mentality. And like this is one of my favorite quotes from a guy who played. He's a West Coast guy, but you know we'll just listen to. Beast mode, Marshawn, let's real quick if we can. That's when it just clicked in my mind that if you just run through somebody's face, a lot of people ain't going to be able to take that over and 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 over again. They're just not going to want that. Think there's a deeper metaphor there? Run through a motherfucker's face. Then you don't have to worry about them no more. <laughs> we should have bleep that one out. It's a, it's a good one. <laughs> right, we bleep that one out. brought up Marshawn because at University of South Florida, I actually built a connection with Marshawn. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty good friends with Marshawn. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Right, Jaden, 
Let us know. Like this, the question was, who? Do you, what do you, What do you tell the players who are recruits or people who are maybe thinking about transferring? What do you think? Uh, you know, really, what I say is just like, why quit now? You know, you 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 went through all of this. You know, you built this built, built these connections, built this bond. It's like, why quit now? You know, like, why why are you gonna go through all of this struggle just to take the easy way out? You know. That's really what I was saying. You know, like Jaren said, I mean, you committed to a university, not a coach. I mean, shit going to keep sailing regardless. So, you know, you just got to come in, put your head down and work because you never know. You know, like you never know. But uh, that's really what I would just have to say. And we also got to ask you, who do you model your game after? Because <laughs> everybody got yes. the big butt. Because you're, you're, you're tall, tall safety. Like you're tall <laughs> safety in the league. You know, But who do you model your game after? Uh, you know, uh, I might not have the same build as him right now, but uh, Cam Chancellor, you know, Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you do want to run, hey, but you got that heart, though. <laughs> you got that heart though. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all know, that matter, baby. Watching, watching them highlights, you know, the Legion of Boom, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know they was they was out there making plays and you know, putting fear in people, so you know, right, you know, you just well, got look, you hitting, you hitting like them too, bro. go ahead. <laughs> Just make oh, sure yeah. them arms ain't closed. I know Malik be doing that sometimes too, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, we appreciate y'all, man. Look, we could always talk, you know, for a long time, man. But we appreciate y'all kicking with us on a Tuesday evening and showing, showing Spartan Nation who y'all are, man. Y'all some true, true character guys, man. And like, I'm, I'm proud to have you guys in the in the club with Spartan Dogs, man. Uh, keep, keep, keep it up. Finish the week strong, because like two said, like. You know, we were close in 07, and I, you know, it's mm-hmm. nothing better than scoring in the in the uh, the horseshoe on the interception, Jaden. So I'm telling you, <laughs> experience like, you. like I would, I would always want to get one in Sparta Stadium, but, but horseshoe is a whole other level. <laughs> Jaren, and so. I'm telling you too, get in that zone there too. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby, yeah. wave, wave to them. Blow my chest. <laughs> yeah. so, hey, don't nobody take a loss harder than them. For real, don't nobody like I'm telling you, they they could be the loudest, and then when you beating their ass, they silence. <laughs> that is, it's like poetic, beautiful silence. You'll never forget it. Oh, for sure. Make yeah. the plays. Y'all got the you, you got the horses, dog. Y'all got the players. Do for sure. Oh, yeah. Do it. Just just do it, man. Stay together, block that shit out, and make it happen. Guys, we really right. appreciate the time. Uh, today for you guys to come on the show, man. Like, best of luck for the rest of the season. But man, hey, you don't be a stranger because we're gonna have to have y'all back on for sure. shortly. Hey, I'm, yes, I'm having us on here. Oh yeah, thank yeah, you, you guys, oh, man. I love, dog. Appreciate y'all, man. Jaron and Jaden Mangum, uh, class act brothers. I-, I can't say enough about them. Yeah, you got home state guys, man. Like, I think that's uh, the beauty of it. Like, like they were raised to to stick it out man like it's gonna get tough out here we already know that but i like that i like how they you know talked about you know sticking it through when it's, it's getting crazy because it has been crazy clearly and uh we all thought about these guys like you know they had every opportunity to step into the portal and and, and leave right and so just to know like they've built a lot like this still ain't this still can turn around and have a solid season knowing that we started the way we started so i'm glad we got them on Man, I like that comment. Somebody was like, Who, "Who's our producer? Our manager's getting our talent." <laughs> <laughs> like, look, this, man, this is a collective effort. Collective you don't know effort. what goes behind the scenes, fellas, right? Right. It's a collective effort. Get everybody in here. No, that was cool. Man. Hey, look, we got to break down the what happened on Saturday. We can talk about the Nebraska recap after these messages from our friends over at SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best. Smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Yes, so fans can. Hey, I love them tickets, brother. Can I make a joke? So when we get on the field on Saturday, uh, I'm getting, I'm doing work. You know, 
I'll be hustling, right? Like I'm on, I'm on the go always. You know, two always call me about something. Right? I'm like, yeah, are you in a good mood or not? I'd be like, no. You know? <laughs> uh, so I see Tom up there, uh, you know, up on this, up in the stands. I'm like, once I saw, I thought he was a seat geek guy quickly. Like, <laughs> John, I had to call you out, man. I thought you was a seat geek guy. Slap me ball. <laughs> That does look like Sean a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> That's funny, man. All right. Look. All right. Here we go. Guys, we got to get right into it. We're going to do the main financial stat recap right now when we talk about Nebraska with their 20 to 7 victory over the Corn Huskers. Be sure to go to. 248-347-MAIN, mainfinancialgroup.com. Jordan and the guys over there great, take great care of you. Spartan Nation's number one wealth managers, mainfinancialgroup.com. Fellas, you know, let's get into it, man. The 20-17 to 17 victory by Michigan State. Caton Hauser, 13 of 20, 165 yards and a touchdown, and 15 carries for my man Cotta, uh, J.U.'s son, for 50 yards. How about my boy Montori Foster Jr. Can't there? Get Four him, baby. Let's go, that boy. He done, hey, we got a whole segment on him. Hey, I, I know seniors in the I chat. Live, baby. Seniors in live, the chat. Baby. So we got we got to we got to go in on Montori. Let's go. <laughs> Listen, to, to have your last home game and have that breakout like he it's been a game where we 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 know like what Montori can do. And for him to go out there and and really put the team on the back from a wide receiver standpoint. You know, when he got that end, uh, touchdown in the end zone, I was like, please, please don't overturn this ball. It was like, I felt like the ball did hit the ground, but it didn't because it was perfect how he caught it. But he put, you could see he was playing with no no fear. He was playing fearless. He was playing free. This is your last time in the woodshed, and I'm glad he put it on uh, the team on his back and get this dub. And I know Senior was ecstatic. I know he was dancing. He got on the jumbotron. He was out there doing everything, man. Let's just excited that we hear, you know, my Tory finally had that breakout. Yeah, he absolutely did. And uh fair yeah. check right here with tight end, a little, little out route here, a little, little pass. The but. the thing that I that I really liked about this game overall is the de- um the defense took theirs away, the offense protected right. ours. They had three turnovers uh, to our zero turnovers. And anytime you can play a football game and have zero turnovers, you're going to win a lot of football games that way. There it was right there. You know, too, I'm, I'm thinking, like, from a standpoint of the pace of our offense when we're driving down, like, you know, it seems like we had control of the tempo, the momentum, poise, you know, like this touchdown to, to Fitzpatrick. Like, we had everything going to your point. But then, like, I'm still scratching my head on that the last, like, minutes of trying to close out the game. And it's just like, where, why are we – why are we getting cute? Why are we going to different things that, you know, what we need to do what took us, you know, to get there. We need to keep doing it. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on that last kind of few possessions where it was just like three and outs and we wasn't getting to the first down where we can close this this, this game? Well, I think the big thing is, um, you know, throughout the game, at the beginning of the game, what we did well was we stayed ahead of schedule. Um, we stayed on schedule or ahead of schedule. And what that means is, on first down, you were able to pick positive yards up. So it, it makes it a lot easier to call uh, a second and six or a second and seven. And then you get to a, a third and two, third and three. We were able to do those a lot and pick a lot of those up, you know, throughout the game, staying on schedule. And later in the game, I thought sometimes that when the pressure gets on you, when you have a lead, and then as a play caller, you start to get, you know, okay, the, what can we do? to be conservative, but you want to throw a wrinkle in there, and that's called a high percentage wrinkle. So if you do a reverse or something like that or a reverse pass, or, you know, that's a high percentage wrinkle when you do that reverse because you're still wanting to do something that's not traditional between the tackles. But I think, you know, like you said, I would continue to just stay on pace and call the game like we called it, call place that's going to keep you on schedule. And when you're behind the chains, it's a lot tougher to do that to, um, you know, to convert and close out the game. But, you know, so to that point, to your point right there, Chu, when you're talking about the mind of the offensive 
coordinator. You have, I think it was five and a half minutes ago in the ball game, and then another time we got the ball back, I think it was in the three-minute time range in the game. You have a 10-point lead at one point and a three-point lead in the other. But when you get into the high percentage, what did you call that, the high percentage play calling? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you yeah, your high percentage um, – while they're more non-traditional plays. Yeah, non-traditional plays. But you call the reverse and then the reverse pass. To me, I, I think that you should take any of those high percentage plays out of the book that have anything to do with pass when you have a lead in the ball game at that juncture in the ball game. Because, you know, as a person who, who you know, we, we all play the game and we've watched a ton of football since then, what there's no benefit to throwing the ball, putting it in harm's way, number one, you can get a turnover. And the other thing that you can do is stop the clock. When you have the lead, the last thing you ever want to do is stop the clock. You know, there's video going around that people, you know, zoomed in. I think uh, one of the cameras got Coach D commenting on one of those plays. <laughs> it, it, look. <laughs> There was a lot of commenting going on for I all. That was the targeting. Players. I thought that was the targeting call. That so was, that was the play call. I didn't know. The, yeah. So so straight to your point, there there is a difference in a high percentage risky play, and then when you're in your four minute offense of grinding and running the clock out. If I'm in my four minute offense now, and uh, what we didn't do, you know, we you know, like I'm not going to put the ball in a receiver's hands to try to throw the ball. You know, you even though you tell them if it's not there, you run it. I'm going to put it in my court. But there are high percentage throws that you can make when you're in your four minute offense. Okay, sneaking this, your back out. Go this ahead. this 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 particular thing that I was discussing was the it was five minutes, but it's it still, in my opinion, you should be in the four minute offense, whatever yeah. the four minute offense is. And we threw a a punt basically down the middle of the field to my uh, to um, you know. The same guy who I think, you know, when we're talking about uh, number zero, who was a Lante transfer, Brown. Monte yeah, Brown. Brown. Yeah, you're trying yes. to get him, you're trying Lante. to get him a stat. It's, it's, it's his own like team. It, it felt to me as if we were trying to get him a stat because he transferred from Nebraska. Well, I mean, I've said his name yeah. a thousand times or whatever I forgot. But look, listen, to, it was, it was that seemed to be more paramount than winning the ball game at that time because. Throwing that pass stopped the clock and allowed for Nebraska to get the ball back after, you know, subsequently have to punt because we did not get the first down. First down is so important. Everyone knows that. I agree. And, with and you. I think, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that you're, no, no, no. We're, we're yeah. I'm saying if, at you, all. if you do want to, if you do want to earlier in the game, it's, a, it's valid. But not Fine. in four minutes. Yeah, that's just that's yeah, what you're saying. Your highest, percent. but there are right. there are passes that you can make. That is, like I said, a high percentage. Put him in the backfield. A lot never lined him in the backfield before. Give him a choice route so he's not going out further than five yards. And if it's not there, and roll. This is the thing also too. When you're in your four minute offense and you want to throw the football. Mm -hmm. what you traditionally tell your quarterback, you call plays. That's that's two way options on that. One thing is you have – you're not going to be going through an entire progression. You're not going to go to your first read, second read, third read. You're not going to do that. In your four-minute offense, if you're going to throw the football, you have two reads you're going to go to. One is your primary receiver, and the second is a check down, what's usually a running back. But the second option in that is you're rolling your quarterback, and you're telling him if – Option one's not there. Option two, run and slide and stay in bounds. That's what you tell you. If you're going to throw the football in your four minute, those are the things. You call plays with two options, a primary receiver and a check down, and it's some type of rollout that your quarterback can run the football, slide, and continue to have the clock run. You're not going to do a traditional drop back and try to get, you know throw a fade ball out there or anything like that because that's not – you know, smart four minute game management. Now we talk about how close this could have turned the wrong way. If we would have punted that last punt in a similar, I start having flashback of Iowa. Yeah. And if he was to botch that punt and get them into field goal range, it would have been tie game in overtime. And I'm like, why are we putting us ourselves in these situations 
it's just stress of just we could have easily sealed that deal. Um, but that's you know, that's neither here nor there. We got the dub. Now we gotta we gotta highlight is Jalen Thompson. Like we 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 need the to entire highlight. defense. The entire like, defense, like, but like, listen, for defense him shine, they balled out. Absolutely, you know, absolutely seven sacks. Seven sacks. Well, they had seven. they had they had the sack, they had the three sacks for a stack that first quarter. Oh, like, Oh, this is kudos. Let's kudos, go, you. baby. Thank you. You know, listen, we saw Game Green flying like everybody's flying. It was just the buzz, the momentum. This is how you set the tone. You come at them every chance you get. Um, everyone, the stunts, you're looking at the defensive ends going in, looping. You got guys coming around. The quarterback had to have so many decision-making power that we just eliminated that. But these guys, look at it. It's just no one's stopping their feet. And then you got a, a, a interception where – that's a cover sack. Like he had to throw it up there to make it, you know, wishing on a prayer. Uh, but for, for for these guys, man, this is where our defense, like Coach Bardet, Hazleton, have turned it up. Like this is not your defense from last season or even the beginning of the season. They finally you know, found some way, some niche to kind of click. And look, everybody's flying to it and everybody's celebrating each other. That's how you play defense and spark defense. That listen, it like the linebackers, you know, J- Malik, hey, listen, my boy, George Hall now, like, you can't say it enough. Like, that him, you got Mangum, you got Spencer, you got Tatum, you got Rucker, you got young Bulls, Jalen Thompson, you got young Bulls, Zion Young, young, young guys that we're going to be building around. And if they all stay, we'll be building around. Future is bright. Future is bright. You all, you all, you all <laughs> smart nation. Enjoy Jordan, enjoy Jordan Hall for another two seasons after this, because this <laughs> once he gets his three years of eligibility, he's going to the league because he's that type of player already being a freshman and playing at this caliber, freshman All American right now, oh, sure. and uh, playing at this caliber. I think the last freshman All American linebacker we had was it Greg Jones, or yeah, absolutely yeah. So Greg Jones, yeah. So he's playing at that caliber right now. And so it's only going to get better and better as he's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. He's going to get faster. And his football IQ, his football knowledge is going to expand even more. He's going to look back. I guarantee you this. In the spring, he's going to look back at this season and be like, what was I doing out there? Because he's yeah, like, I better <laughs> he's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I got like – Give another. This is my last kudos. Like Jalen Thompson, a guy who comes from Cash Tech, mm. and patiently, I want to say, like very patiently, has waited for his number to be called. Mm. And when his number was called, what did he do? Like he, didn't, he wasn't pouting. He wasn't. Oh, what was me? I'm gonna hit the portal. He waited, got his name called, and then just made it the platform. That situation so bright. I want to say kudos to the young, that young man. Because he is going after it. He's he's pushing the young older guys too. But like that is the element of just perseverance, the Spartan way, Jalen Thompson. And like I'm glad he's on our squad. But you know, the, the thing is, you're seeing this now in the you know, last game and this game. What I'm seeing is the guys they're flying around, they're playing with pass, it's guys that want to be here. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's that mindset. And Coach Barnett talked about, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm taking the kid gloves off and the guys that are going to be out there playing are guys that want to be here. And that's what we're seeing. I think they're playing like that right now, especially on the defensive side. Yeah. I mean, listen, Oda said a lot uh, in your in your analysis of what the defense is doing and everything that, you know, the, the, the young freshman is doing. But, guys – we got to talk about the quarterback situation because that's what Spartan Nation wants to talk about. You have Caden Hauser. We know he was 50, 13 to 20 for 165 yards. He seems to have a, a good grasp of the offense. There's a lot of fans out there that believe that Sam Levitt is the guy. And, and and he is very athletic. He threw a touchdown pass. I think uh, he had, what, 25 yards. He was one for two. Through a touchdown, 25 yard touchdown pass. Uh, I believe that was to Montori. That was on a rope. And that was a rope. rope. That major, what they call a frozen rope. Mm-hmm. That was one of those, you know. So it, it, 
when you let, let, let's look right now, we're entering to a, a point where Sam has to decide whether or not he's going to burn his red shirt with three games left in the season. Is he going to burn his red shirt by playing in this particular game, or will he hold on to the red shirt? Uh, here's some comments from head coach Harlan Burnett. That's for the team, and that's what he wants to do as well, and so and for him as well. So we're we're, we're still working through it, to be honest with you. And then. If he was to decide not to play again this season, where would you go to, for depth at quarterback with, you know, with Kayton being the only healthy scholarship guy, Andrew behind him, and, and would you move somebody to quarterback? Or do you think Noah mm-hmm. could come back? Uh, you know, you still have Drew Scorfar uh, as, a, as a player for this playing quarterback as well. Um, so, you know, that's we'll, we'll, we'll stand pat, but, you know, no decisions have really been ultimately made concerning Sam yet. So we'll just keep working. What do you think, fellas? No, I mean, I think they'll make the the best decision, you know. And obviously, I think Sam's a team player guy, but, like, it is a future decision. So, like, it's an element of, you know, it's crazy because, I mean, the rules have changed so much since we've been – since we played. Oh, yeah. like, I feel like the first, first non-conference four games is where you're able to get a little bit of love on, on the field and – you know, before you play that Big Ten opener, then you have to decide. Uh, for so being so late, you know, in the season, you know, we need we do need him, right? I think we need that element of it. it's okay to have a one-two QB punch like other schools have to to kind of give the spark and the fire where somebody's down, another one comes in, gives you spark, and it elevates Caden. Like, because I think that's what happened where, you know, when Sam came in and, and started to give it the spark, it gave Caden another spark to come out there and, and then obviously drive it. So, it's a it's a sit, tricky situation. Now, when you say Sparta fans want to know, like, it is what it is. Like, we we will figure it out. But you know, you do hope that it's best for he does what's best for his his personal career longevity. But you also don't want to go in uh, with an unproven backup, and then you got Caden that's about to be you know facing a, a, an outstanding defense in Ohio State. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> my, my thought on it is college football has changed. Uh, you don't need that red shirt year. You know, if you're going to play football, you got guys that, that come in and play one year, two years and still play in the league. Um, you know, so college football has changed. Uh, Sam has that, um, you know, his, his dad played high level, his brother plays in the league. He has that benefit of the doubt behind him already. All right. So I think, you know, coming in and playing this year, getting meaningful game experience under his belt, understanding to read defenses, understanding you know what throw to make, what situation, reading your keys and, and identifying fronts, assessing the top, you know, all those different things. You're you're gonna be fine. And that's gonna add to your arsenal. That's gonna one add to your um your um confidence going into the off season because you've played in the game. You've played in games, you've played in meaningful games and uh you, you know what it takes. That's going to add to your confidence. You're going to go into spring ball with more confidence, with more of that athletic arrogance that you can win and be – you got to play three years. You don't need to go four years now to play in the league. You can still play. He, he still has a lot in front of him. I don't think – I think red shirting now, nowadays is just pointless unless you're a guy that comes in and you need to add weight on to yourself and develop, you know, physically that way. But I think – um, red shirt now is is a thing of the past. If I'm a freshman and I'm playing against Ohio State, ain't no way I'm burning. Ain't no ain't no way we talk about it. The money game, the opportunity, like you said, you. I'm a freshman. I'm going to Columbus and I'm playing against the Buckeyes. Yes. This is what you dream about, right? Like you may not get this opportunity, and so like it's an element. Why why do it? Like this is going to help you propel you for the next season. So right. I, I don't see why you would. But as a freshman, you, in my you, opinion, but I, you would not burn. I would not burn. Like I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I know I'm as a quarterback. I'm like I so, will play. I will play. So like, why would you would not? I'm sorry. I would you, not burn my red shirt. You I would. Play. You would burn. I would. I'm would sorry. I would. I'm you sorry. would. Right. Yeah. We're sorry. saying this incorrectly, and it was like, I, <laughs> yeah. We're saying yeah. yes. And the thing too, like, it's, it, and Sam's at an advantage here. 
he's been put in, except for that last, the, the last, this first series, he was in a backed up situation yeah. there. But um, when he's being put in the game, it's in good situations that, you know, we need a little spark and he can come in and change of pace kind of guy right there because defenses haven't quite figured him out yet. So he's put in there and he's having success. He's seen success and that's growing and building his confidence right now. And like I said, I'm going to, red shirting is, is a thing of the past. Guys are going to come in. That's why guys go to IMGs. That's why guys go to different different schools. That's why they go to these prep schools, private schools, so they can come in and play right away. Back when we were coming in, we were like, oh, man, you know, I want to get big, strong, fast, learn the playbook, and then get in there. Guys are coming in now with the mindset of playing right now because it's that three and out mentality. Uh, You're absolutely right. What – the transfer portal being where it's at, too. Like, the, let's if we want to get dive down into the the details, is why development isn't paramount anymore. You're not going to be able to, you know, de, you know, develop guys and and like red shirt them. It's because you have a transfer portal and it's rampant. Coaches are opting to go to the sure thing, the guys they know who've already adjusted. We all know. There were players in our classes, all three of us can attest to there being cl- players in our classes that didn't show up or they were there for a very short time. Those players are eliminated now with the advent of the transfer portal. They're getting sure bets, people that they know that they've already been able to go to a different state, or city, whatever it is, and adjust, get away from mother, father, whoever it is that they are uh, relying on and they know exactly who they are it's a better bet because universities are not allowing coaches to coach forever uh and before right they, you know what i mean <laughs> they're, because, they're, you know, you they stray, need results that's a, now that's a very good point there stray universities aren't giving those coaches the the four-year you know to come and develop and build your program it's, no you got to come in yeah. now you yeah. have two years tops you got one year to clean house Make the house look nice. Year two, your ass better be putting up points going to bowl. You know, hey, it's a flip or flop situation. HGTV, right. and, <laughs> and and so these kids, yes. these, these coaches. Now what they're doing is they're gonna find the guy that can play. They, they don't care, they don't care about red shirt and guys anymore. They're gonna come in. Hey, you can play. You can help us. Boom. If we got to go to a two two quarterback system, two running, you better back. red shirt in kindergarten. <laughs> That's why I tell parents nowadays: right. you better red shirt hold early. Them back, hold them back. Early. Hold them back yeah. because they ain't gonna. Be, you are the, absolutely the, right. Yeah, the you times know. of coming in and getting yeah. bigger, stronger, faster are gone. gone. That's why. <laughs> that's Long why you get gone. the reclassification. We had, we had Ike everything. Reese on this. Done and dusted. Ju done and dusted. Done and right. dusted. Right. Remember we had Ike Reese on this show. <laughs> I, Ike Reese, great Spartan, legendary Spartan, played I don't know a hundred years for the. Philadelphia Eagles, tough guy. He he would not be a Spartan today based off of how he left high school. You know, as a guy who they were, you know, and also ran, I don't know. No, there are none of those guys that are being signed to Division One scholarships anymore. And this is a shame because there's going to be some great players as evidence of what the history has shown us that will be passed over for uh, what is so called a sure bet in the transfer portal, guys? Yeah, you know, and you know too. You got you got guys coming in. The Hasselback kid, he's going to be coming in uh, next year. Yeah. There's yeah. going to be some other quarterback coming in. So you don't you don't got that time, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look, guys, we could talk all day long. You know, I really do appreciate uh, everything that. The guys, you know, Jaron and Jaden Megum were able to provide, you know, as an insight to what we know as Spartan football. Those guys, they've been through a lot. And just talking to those guys, you can see, you can really sense like, okay, you got you got a, a good combination of, of experience there and, and, and obviously a lot of talent. Jaron was able to provide them with information about, hey, look, man, the sun does come up because you need that as young players when you're going through something you've never been through before. Oh, my coach is gone. He's, he's, he's right there. You got a guy who not only lost the coach, but he lost the same coach for different reasons. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Different reasons. A lot of different reasons. (laughs) (laughs) But but like that's that's value. That's value that we can't measure because we can't see it on the field. No one knows exactly what's going on. But guys like I I I can't thank him enough, thank Jaden enough. Um you know, do you guys have any final comments before we because we yeah, gotta put after, a ball on this one? After after you leave on here, after you're done watching us here, turn on, I believe, ESPN two. Watch a little Tuesday night Maction. The quarterback the from Maction. The quarterback from University of Buffalo, Cole Snyder, that kid. He's a kid I coached back in New York, you know, playing the Ooh. he he was originally in Rutgers. Then he transferred back. But he ain't to, in the uh, green and white, so we ain't watching. I'm just playing. What's that? <laughs> he, he, it's he's Tuesday, Otis. We'll try getting him in the green and white. It's Tuesday. He's, he's gonna be a grad transfer. He's gonna be a grad, a graduate. You know, we we could. You know, hey, throw him out there. The kid, he he got to carry them things in a wheelbarrow because he's a gunslinger like that. Okay. <laughs> I can't be mad at that, man. Listen, Tuesday night action. Uh, selfish plugs are, are welcome. OK, because everyone wants an edge, just like they do over in Ann Arbor. Anyway, guys, we'll don't, see what's don't, going don't, on. Don't, don't, think we, hey, listen, don't think that we forgot about that. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> that, we going to, what's his name, Tony Petiti? We going to holler at you. To, we got to, by the time we come back and reconvene, they, we, and we and need like, to be wait, talking. We're going to have a show, whole show a, on that. It's a Wednesday show, like, between Tuesday and Thursday. Thursday. It's going down Wednesday, but 5 p.m. Why Wednesday. They re- we oh need to know. They're reaching, bro. They are reaching for it. Oh, my gosh. they reaching far. they try trying to reach far, far to make sure they, they clean the list. But <laughs> yeah, we got grits. There. <laughs> Not going to happen. Might. They might. I, no, no, no. I said the same no. thing. I think I, think I said the same go. thing, man. Harbaugh's going to pull his best. I love it. I love I it. I love it, Steve. Thing. And James, look, look they are. They damn sure are. Hey, man. Hey, hey, they caught us. They caught us stealing cookies, man. Everybody got to <laughs> Everybody got to Come on, My tell on yourselves. Y'all did it, too. Come on, man. The hell you out of here. CMU sold us out. Ain't nobody sold us out. We going to be all right. Listen, for J.U. Culquick and Otis Wiley, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is, this is Sparta MSU. Have a good night. God bless you. Go green. Go white. Go white. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, Please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support. And as always, go green.